I've got PF Sense problems. Let's get started. What's up guys? I am running PF Sense as my firewall on a server that I built and after uh, upgrading from version 2.1 to version 2.26 uh, from within PF Sense uh, I ran into a problem. The machine is not booting and after a whole bunch of research and some troubleshooting I've decided that I no longer want to keep PF Sense version 2.1 on the hardware that I'm using and uh, I'm just gonna kind of rebuild a uh, new PF Sense box. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. So we have two computers up on the bench. The one on the right is the rack server that I built to run PF Sense. Uh, and this was put together using some components that I had laying around. Uh, this is an ASUS motherboard running an AMD uh, Athlon X3 chip, I believe. Um, it's got four, I think it's four gigs, maybe six gigs of memory, uh, a couple of uh, gig network cards, and a couple of hard drives. Uh, the network cards I had to custom fit uh, because I didn't have the right uh, backing plate, so I needed to fix those. Uh, and I have a whole video series about uh, this whole thing, so I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. And the computer on the left here is the Asus Essential PC that has been kicking around in my house for a number of years. At one point, this was my main computer, uh, like years and years ago. Uh, and then it uh, became a Windows home server for a little while. And then when I upgraded my home server uh, with the insides of another computer, I put everything back in the Essencio case uh, so that I could uh, resell it. And as it turned out, uh, my schedule became so busy that it just sat on my bench collecting dust. And it's probably better that it did because now I'm going to repurpose this uh, from this machine into my new PFSense box. What I'm going to be doing first is installing PFSense on this equipment while it's still in this case. Uh, so I will do all of that here, but I need to pull the NICs out of this system so I can get them installed here so that when I do the install of PFSense, it sees all the, the network cards and, and I can configure those the right way. The network cards that I'm using are Netgear GA311s. I've had these for a little while. Um, you notice that up at the top here, this is actually kind of um, hand cut. Um, that's just a fancy word for saying, uh, or fancy way of describing the hack job that I did uh, to get the uh, face plates to fit in that small case. Now, what I'm going to have to do though is to actually take these out, um, and they just screw in, so I can do that because they won't fit in the full height case over here uh, so that I can get them to sit inside of the slot. So I need to take those off. Kind of a weird angle, but I wanted to show you what the cards look like without the face plates installed in the motherboard, and you can tell that uh, they are uh, pretty wobbly. Now what I did do is make a note of the serial number and the MAC addresses for these network cards and what PCI slot they were installed in on the motherboard so that when I install PFSense, I know what uh, network card the install is referring to based on the information that I see on the screen. Now, there are a ton of videos and tutorials and write-ups on how to install PFSense. It's actually pretty easy. You just sort of follow the prompts. Uh, so I won't be showing that um, in the video. Uh, but what I will do is do that install, and then when I come back, um, we'll uh, hopefully be done with that. And then I'll start moving all this stuff over into the other case. Alright, PFSense is done installing on the new box. I didn't have any uh, problems doing that, which is really good. Uh, so now I need to start prepping the rack case for the new stuff, uh, or the new old stuff, I guess. Uh, I've already taken out the hard drive caddies that were up here in the front. Uh, the power supply is going to stay, uh, but the motherboard is coming out. So that's the next step. Pretty much empty now. Uh, the uh, motherboard came out pretty easy, uh, no big deal there. Took a little bit of compressed air and got rid of some of the dust. Uh, but since everything is out, or mostly everything anyways, I'm just taking the opportunity to make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, so now I just need to pull the other hardware out and get it in here. So here's what came out of that uh, Asus Essentio PC. Uh, this is a uh, Asus motherboard running an Intel dual core uh, Pentium uh, CPU. It's an E5400 running at 2.7 gigahertz, 6 gigs of DDR3 memory, and a 250 gig hard drive. 
Now, collectively, this is way overkill for PF Sense, but this is what I had on hand, and uh, that ends up being a good thing because if I didn't have this, I would have been uh, kind of scrambling to figure out what to do. Now, incidentally, I've got a little piece of blue tape here uh, just to make sure that I put the right network uh, card back in the same slot. Uh, I did make a note of the uh, MAC address on the back of the card, but you know, blue tape is a lot easier to uh, keep track of. Before I end up attaching the motherboard to the standoffs and screwing those down, uh, I wanted to get the power supply uh, plugged into the motherboard first, uh, mainly because of this ledge in the back which is used for the hard drives. Uh, having the motherboard set down ends up putting that plug very, very close, uh, if not just under the ledge of this uh, little piece here, and getting uh, my hands underneath there to be able to plug this in would be um, pretty tough to do without kind of cutting my hand uh, and I'm not really interested in doing that. Uh, so I can do that first and now I can actually lay this in and then screw it down and then uh, continue uh, with putting the uh, stuff in the case. Well, turns out I was wrong. This motherboard is slightly smaller than what I took out and the uh, plug is available and there's nothing in the way. Uh, so I could have just put the motherboard in and then put the power. Uh, so that's okay that's actually good uh, so next thing to do is just wire up all the fans and one thing I noticed was um, there's three little fans in the front here uh, I had one that wasn't plugged in and then as I was searching around for something I did end up coming across this little adapter that will just let me plug in that third fan uh, to get a little bit more cooling uh, so this is just a Molex to a fan adapter um, so that's gonna be pretty good Finally, I have everything in the case, and there are a few things I wanted to point out. Uh, first off, cable management. Uh, it's about as neat as it's going to get. Uh, these small cases don't really lend themselves well for uh, being ultra, uh, ultra neat when it comes to the cables. The majority of the extra cables are just in this uh, area here. This is where optical drives or any other 5 and a quarter inch drive is going to be installed. I don't have any, uh, so this just ends up being a nice spot for that. Um, I only have the one hard drive, so I took the uh, spare hard drive that I had in here before, I just took it out, and um, overall I'm not terribly worried about heat um, for this case. I mean, first off, I'm in the basement, or these servers are in the basement, so it's relatively cool down here, um, and I didn't have a ton of uh, heat problems with my other system, uh, so I'm not, not very worried. I got the fans in the front, uh, the pass-through fan through the power supply, uh, and there's a lot of venting and stuff, so it should be just fine. I should also point out that uh, once I had everything in here, I did plug it in and turn it on and make sure that it continued to work. Uh, I, just as a sanity check, uh, just to make sure I didn't forget to plug something in or uh, maybe broke something when I was transferring stuff over, but everything works uh, just fine. Uh, the last couple things I need to do is uh, put the cover back on, get it in the rack, and then I can get back to my office, log in, and uh, wrap up the configuration. Uh, I'm actually very happy that I was able to knock this out and actually get it on camera uh, for you guys. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all of that's great. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.